Hello everyone. Before we get started, if you notice that my lighting is kind of weird in here, it's because my lighting is kind of weird in here. Um, I usually have blackout curtains on this window right here, but they refuse to stay up. Mentally overwhelmed and don't feel like fighting it. I've gone on a ladder, me, six foot tall, went on a ladder twice today. Not doing it. Speaking of people not knowing when to end a fight, hello. <laughs> It's Kendo here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skill at Biscuit? Happy Saturday. And this week we are continuing the mischief, the madness. Honestly, the concerning uh, sequence of events that is the second half of the ultimatum queer love. I talked about the first five episodes last week, the last five episodes, including the decisions as well as the reunion. But before we get started on that, of course we have to send it over to Admiral Kenny so that we can pay the bills in here and I guess buy another hook. It's always something, isn't it? Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kinney and today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp. ThreadUp is the online thrift store that allows you to have all of the wonderful things about thrifting, like finding something unique, finding something at a fraction of the price, but none of the things that you don't like, which is like fighting a crowd to find that one unique piece only to find out that it doesn't fit you because you're six foot tall and plus size. <laughs> But for people like me, or just people that don't wanna fight a crowd to get a product, like I'm not an archeologist, I'm not going digging, I'm, I'm going shopping. For those of you like me who want the experience to be all joyful, ThreadUp is the website for you because it allows you to organize by size, by style, and you can just find what you would already be able to wear and then you can go from there and it's great. <laughs> I have a few pieces to show you, particularly because it's summer. Want to uh, expand my summer dress catalog repertoire? Well, the first thing is this dress that I really like because it, it plays into my love for pleather. So this isn't really maybe great for summer, but I still wanted it, okay? And it's from Shein. And as I said last time during my um, thread up haul, I'm not a huge Shein person. I don't like to buy from them directly, but it would have been thrown in a landfill. So I'm like, okay, I'll take it. And I think it's very, very cute. I do think that it might be a hair too big, like around like the armpit and some places on the middle, my midriff area, but it's also just very sexy. <laughs> so not that I'm going anywhere. I am going somewhere. I'm traveling a lot this year. I'm look sexy. I got this for $22.99. This is originally from White Fox. This was giving me my, my Hercules Meg moment. Beautiful. It makes me feel like a siren, like a like a nymph out in the Greek gardens or something. And I was very like, I was living. Give me a nice sandal. Have my whole legs out, make my boobs look nice. I would need boob tape for this, I think. $28.99. So this was originally by a brand called Lily by Fermion. Anna. And it's supposed to be a top. That's what it said on the website, but this is a dress to me. This is giving very go-go. And I want to put on some white boots or maybe like a white beret and white boots. Yes. It has a cute little ribbon by the, by the neck and it's very cute. $18.99. This is a dress from Chic Me. Sexy, cut out dress, boobs out. I believe in myself. I will wear this out one day. I don't know if it's gonna be soon. I do look good in it though. I think I look good in it. And this was $20.99. So if you would like to check out ThreadUp, maybe some similar pieces that I got, feel free to check out my link down below and use my code Kenny so you can get 40% off your first order. Big thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. While we're talking, as a side note, I have dinner. It was supposed to be a bastardized chicken marsala, but I don't have marsala. So it's just chicken and mushrooms on potatoes. It busto. Why don't I eat potatoes more? As this is a continuation of last week's video, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know how things have gone down this far, watch the last video. I will link that up above and down below. In that video, I mentioned how my thoughts on cast members may change as events continue. Spoiler, they have. <laughs> Cause it's been an absolute shit show. It feels ghetto to be able to see my light socket. Well, it'll just have to be a little bit ghetto. <laughs> so this is the beginning of our switchback. For those of you that don't know what the ultimatum is and all the premise of it, I again would recommend watching the first video. I talk more about it, but essentially for the last three weeks, they've been having a trial marriage with a different person. And now for the next three weeks, they're gonna return to their original partners and have a trial marriage with them and see how that goes. If I have potato in my teeth, just ignore it. Just 
listen to my beautiful voice. <laughs> so episode six, this episode begins with the last day before the switchover. So they have their final dinner and talk about what they learned from the experience. And as you know, from the last five episodes, people have had varying levels of success during this first trial marriage. So some seem to be a bit more happy to just get back to their original partners. And some of them are in this weird place because they very much so enjoy the three weeks with their new partner, quote unquote. And now they're going back to the old ways of things. And that's very jarring emotionally, both I'm sure for cast members, but also for me, because I'm not gonna lie, there were some people that I was like, oh, that's very cute. But also, mm, people are getting hurt. Some that deserve it, some that don't. Well, I guess who's to say who deserves it? I don't care that Vanessa got her feelings. I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. But anyway, Tiff and Sam, of all the couples, I feel like they learn the most from each other. It's like very obvious the things that they learn from each other. Again, Tiff went in very hot headed because her original partner, Mildred, is hot headed and <laughs> we'll discover is actually worse. Well, no, it's about as bad as I thought, but I didn't want to put that out there if that wasn't the case. But no, she's 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 as bad as I, I figured. But Tiff has learned that not every interaction has to be so fraught with anger and vitriol. And like, sometimes there are people that actually allow you to speak, so you don't have to do that. So they've learned how to settle things without jumping first to anger because they were so primed to do that with Mildred. Whereas Sam, I believe learned maybe the opposite skill. She learned how to stand up for herself, speak up for herself, and not just let her partner drive every conversation, every situation, every emotional landscape. She has some say in it now, which is great. I feel like they've actually learned things that are very important to bring back to their original relationships and will help them kind of decide what they want from those relationships. Ozzy and Mildred, if you recall, Ozzy had left the experience. So this is the first time Ozzy and Mildred have seen each other since then. They end up having a milder version of the same argument they have all the time, which is about Ozzy running away and Mildred bulldozing. I was very frustrated at this because Tiff does like defend Mildred in this way <laughs> about like, well, you can't just leave every interaction you have. Are you gonna do that when things get hard in a marriage? And I'm like, if she's verbally abusive, yes, I am. Granted, Ozzy does it in every situation, but they're primed for that because it, I would imagine because they had a very, well, no, they talked about it. They had a very tumultuous upbringing. So there's a reason for that and they need to figure that out in contexts that don't call for it. But I think Mildred is the type of person you gotta just say, I'm walking out. I can't have this conversation with you. There was also a point where Ozzy was like, I just didn't feel safe in the environment with Mildred. I don't think they were wrong for that. Vanessa and Ray speak. I'm not gonna say that they're lying about how much they learn from each other. But I will say, if there's anything that they learned, we did not see it. All we learned is that Vanessa really wanted to have sex. They had some form of it. And now after the experience, for some reason, she wants to get married. She wants to settle down, have babies, and she wants to do that with Xander. Bitch, what? The whole, okay, all right, sure. What? <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself because another thing that came up is that Vanessa was not interested in telling anyone about the sexual encounter with Ray because apparently Vanessa and Xander had had an agreement that they wouldn't cross that line, which they both have. So they have both in a way cheated if you think of it that way. So I'm not like washing past that considering that Xander did cross that line several times. If you think it's even a line that's valid considering y'all are broken up, I don't know. Regardless, Vanessa didn't behave at any point like it was valid because she was trying to everybody from the beginning. So I don't know when this mattered then, but okay, cool. Vanessa then reads an apology to the cast, basically saying she didn't mean to be annoying and saying that through this process, again, her views on marriage have suddenly shifted. Yoli calls her out, which we'll get to Yoli later because she's, interesting in this final five episodes to say the least. L Yoli calls her out and who's quick to defend Vanessa? Xander, because that's what Xander does. After that, Mal and Lexi talk and it's very sweet. They seem like they didn't do anything physical because they figured that that would muddy the waters a bit, but they seem to have had just a good time, if anything, like they've made a good friendship. So that was really cool. There is a part where Yoli gets a little bit shady about how great their connection was or how great their experience was because apparently Yoli believes that Mal hasn't showed that 
type of consistency in their relationship the entire three years. So it's, I guess, cute or whatever that they were able to show up in that way for three weeks, but that's not the Mal I know. Then Xander and Yoli talk. You can kind of tell already that their connection is qualitatively different than other people that have been like complimenting the partner that they had over the last three weeks. Theirs feels romantic. Mal kind of admits in the most mature way possible. Again, I, I mentioned this last time, but through these five episodes, Mal shows you what their character is. Like incredible, so much better of a person than I could ever be. They know way in hell. Mal admits that they feel kind of uncomfortable because it seems like Yoli doesn't want to come back, right? It's like, you're kind of bummed that you got to go back to your old boring life. And Yoli kind of falls back on this sort of sentiment of like, I don't know. I don't know what to feel. I don't know what to think. I don't, which is fair. I'm sure it's a confusing situation to be in. At this point of the viewing experience, I gave Yoli some grace because it's the early transition back into uh, your original partnership and you fell in love, admittedly. That's what she said. She fell in love with another person in three weeks, which is interesting. Like Yoli doesn't look like she's excited to be in her original relationship. It looks like she's checked out and it just looks like she's holding on to it until the end of the trial or until Xander decides to leave or not. And if, if Xander decides to stay with Vanessa, I think Yoli would just stay with Mal because that's the safe option, but that's not who you want. But again, Mal is patient and is like, like if what you want is Xander, I would never wanna get in the way of that. I want you to be loved. I love you enough to want you to do what you want and what you need and where you feel love. And if that's with Xander, then that's where it is. It is what it is. It's not like throwing Yoli away. It's this really affirming like, but I love you. I care about you. It's been you. It's always gonna be you. That type of energy. Y'all better than me. <laughs> Y'all just have so much more patience. I just, um, and Ves Vanessa's like, well, I wanna get married now. So I'm going after you, Xander, cause you're the one I want now. So it's the beginning of the trial marriages and we start off with Lexi and Ray and it's immediately uncomfortable between the two since Ray had sexual contact with Vanessa. Spoiler, they're gonna have the same argument <laughs> for the next five episodes. And there comes a point where I just lose track of why Lexi is so fixated on this. Like at some point it becomes this kind of obsessive thing, or at least it's edited that way, maybe not, but about Vanessa. Again, they had a conversation apparently before it started that they knew that sex was a possibility during this experience and they had decided that's something we understand going into this, but I don't know. And meanwhile, Vanessa is being manipulative does that shock anyone? It doesn't shock me. I want marriage so bad now. I want that life with you. But I did this experience because I wanted to figure out whether or not marriage was for me. And I found out that it was. Bitch, since when? We didn't, we didn't see one lesson you learn. This entire thing outside of Xander has the possibility to want somebody other than you. Before that, you was just trying to f wasn't trying to learn nothing about what is it like to be married and what I want for marriage and bitch, you a liar. Meanwhile, the other half of that equation, Yoli, I have very different feelings about even though they're technically in the same space, but because I don't like Vanessa so much, I don't give a f if she feels bad about it, but I like Mal. So I care if you're hurting Mal, complicated. But Yoli returns to Mal. And again, Mal is such a better person than me. There's no way that I can remain this calm as the person I want to marry. And at no point did Mal not want to marry Yoli. That was never the question, is that they didn't feel ready yet. So the person that I want to marry is crying about leaving another person. I couldn't, <laughs> I'm not secure enough for that. I just, I'm not, <laughs> and I don't think I ever will be. Yoli admits to falling in love with Xander. I was pretty obvious. Um, And I guess Mal isn't surprised by that because again, if you recall last time, Mal was like, I know Yoli and she's a private person to fall in love incredibly quickly. But it still hurts to see Mal be like, I love you still. And I'm so happy you were loved by Xander in this time. You deserve to feel that. But I have known you for lifetimes before this shit. And I still want to marry you. I know your strengths, your weaknesses, your flaws. We've been through shit. And I will always choose you. And I'm like, this is beautiful. I hope Mal's a writer. Somebody, uh... <laughs> contact Mal to write some shit for the like love confessions on a Bridgerton episode. Kill it. Cause that was beautiful. 
I was like, oh, my heart. Mal does admit that it hurts. It hurts your ego, but I'm not going anywhere. Later, Vanessa confronts Xander because she went through Xander's phone, which apparently is something that they do regularly. They have a relationship where both of their phones have like an open phone policy. Um, So that's their relationship. That's fine. Vanessa found that Xander was messaging Yoli. And in according to Vanessa, it was quite flirtatious. I will say, again, not a huge fan of Vanessa, but she handles this better than I would. <laughs> if I found out some information like this, I would feel some type of way about it. You didn't talk to me during your trial marriage. So like, it's not fair for you to talk to Yoli during ours. I don't know how often I have to tell you, but I want you and I want to marry you. I love you. I love you. Say it back. Say it back, Xander. Ooh. <laughs> See, when you can't say I love you back to a person you've dated for four years, that's the sign. I think that's when you're like, regardless of who I end up with, that's the sign we should break up because damn. Tiff and Mildred meet up with uh, Tiff's friend. They all talk about the experience. The friend asks, how often have they broken up? And apparently they've broken up at least 50 times during their two year relationship. Y'all getting married. I, from what I understand, most of these breakups are initiated by Mildred. Uh, the friend asked like, shit, well, have y'all gone to therapy? Apparently the therapist fired them. <laughs> And I'm like, y'all are like, all jokes aside, this is not a healthy environment to do anything, let alone get married, move in together, take care of Mildred's child who has disabilities, take care of the pets. It just seems like a very bad idea already. And y'all don't even live together. So there's no escaping at that point. Speaking of people that shouldn't be getting married, um, Ozzy. Ozzy tells Sam that they are now in the position to consider marriage and are leaning towards getting engaged. And Sam congratulates them for having this intimate sensitive conversation instead of just running away she then says something along the lines of like i could see how that act of avoiding and running and leaving was probably something that was hard for mildred to work with and it, it would make her frustrated and upset so i kind of understand that i do too but i think everything makes mildred upset Mind you, Sam brings this up incredibly calmly. She's another one that's just like this endless patience. <laughs> that I don't know where y'all, I don't want it. I was gonna say, do you buy it? <laughs> is this what love is? I hope not. But this triggers Ozzy and guess what they do? They leave again. Ah, well, who am I to say what is your trigger? But from the outside, at least, it just seems so minimal. And I was just sitting there like, oh, it's just not fair for Sam to have to take up so much emotional labor in this relationship. Like, I don't know how you do it. And I don't believe you should. Who's to say? But I do wonder if Ozzy is in any way being therapized or is in any way making some material steps towards healing themselves or if this is just an endless pain cycle that they've been going through all 42 years of their lives and it's just like not fair on either of them like please look towards healing and sam you shouldn't have to do this this shouldn't be all your job to harbor their emotions oh my god i don't know what her occupation is she gives a vibe of a therapist but you're not their therapist you're not ozzy's therapist that's your partner, what? This is me being nitpicky. There is a part where Ozzy refers to, to Sam as their rock. And I know it's I know it's innocuous and I'm making more out of nothing, but it's just like, that's not her job. That's not her whole utility. Like, damn, when do you return the love? <laughs> when are you an emotional support? I have yet to see that. And it doesn't seem like that ever really happened. I don't know. Uh, Lex and Ray are still having that same argument, but this time in front of her parents. And Lex is still very mad, almost in this obsessive way. And I was, again, very confused about why they were still having this argument, considering, again, they seem to understand that sex was something that can happen. I get it that she doesn't like Vanessa, but I'm not a fan of Vanessa either. But I don't know where this particular vitriol is coming from. She seems very hot. And it's just hard to watch. It's just watching Lex, who is hurt by something Ray did, kind of browbeat Ray, who's already super insecure. So during this conversation, we do a little, get a little bit more clarity on that. Apparently it was because Ray, before the whole experience started, had gone to Lexi. Without Lexi asking for this reassurance, Ray goes to her and says, I'm not gonna sleep with Vanessa. You need to trust me. Do you trust me? Why don't you trust me? I would never do that to you. And I'm like, 
Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Then I see why you're upset. Again, if you've gone out of your way to say, you have to trust me, this is a trust thing. Please trust me. I would, I would just break up with you. Cause I feel like if you don't break up, you have to let it go. And obviously she's not letting it go. And at this current state, you're just getting more and more brow beating Ray, who's already has a lot of self-loathing, it seems. So it's not great on you being able to forgive yourself. And this isn't great for Lexi because she just has this constant reminder of you in a way cheating on her. So just break up. At this point, I think most of y'all should break up. Is there anybody that should stay together? No. <laughs> I don't think any of y'all should stay together. To end out the episode, Vanessa and Xander go on a hot air balloon because apparently this is something that Xander has wanted to do for years. And of course that's when <laughs> Vanessa is like, yeah, let me do this thing that you've always wanted to do. I do it when you were about to leave me so I can win you back. She then reads off a poem, of course. It's like an apology slash plea to have Xander choose her. Again, it's just infinitely frustrating because we've been together for four years and deciding that, oh, maybe I can live my life without you for you to get your shit together, but okay. But that's the end of the episode, episode seven. Ray and Lexi are still having the same conversation. Say this, I'm gonna skip any other time they talk about it because it's just like, I'm tired. It's very taxing. They have the same conversation at varying levels of emotional volatility through the rest of this show. So I would just say they having a the conversation again. <laughs> so, But all you need to know is that Ray is still like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for marriage. Mildred and Tiff start arguing again. Tiff had learned some like, conflict resolution with Sam in the trial marriage. So they're very calm. They're very like reasonable. And here comes Mildred and she blames her entire lack of communication skills and, and her downright abusive <laughs> interaction on being a Latina. Girl, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> she like, the reason I can't respect you and reason why I can't have mature conversation is because I'm a Latina. I'm just sitting here imagining like, what if I walked into any romantic situation and I'm like, sorry. Can't treat you right. I'm a an and and Tiff is like I I'm not about to have this conversation with you. I'm about to leave. And then Mildred is like, okay, fine, just run away. I guess it don't matter. Oh my God, I'm gonna need you two to go to therapy. All of y'all need like serious help. You have some immense attachment issues, and it's concerning. Like it really is. Sam ends up meeting Ozzy's brother who seems to be very cool. This is where we kind of allude, not so much allude, just straight up talk about how Ozzy's family aren't really the most affirming family. Ozzy hasn't come out to the family yet, which is interesting considering this is a international show. Would Sam have to say that they're just friends? Would they have to, like what would what would have to happen? And and Ozzy, at least in that regard, is like, you know, I, I I will introduce you as my partner. So Mildred and Tiff make up and try to talk it over. As I've talked about before, Mildred has a tendency to throw Tiff away. I think the one way that I can show love is to stay. I think when everyone else wouldn't. No, no. <laughs> they left for a reason, bitch. I'm gonna need y'all to start understanding that love is inherently conditional. There is no such thing as unconditional love. So if you go verbally, emotionally, whatever, be abusive to me, you will not get my love in return. The f I don't have to stick around because other people left. So I don't wanna be the one that leaves you. I will be the person that leaves first. It'll be people that left you six years ago and I'll pass the <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you got me up. Go to therapy. You take ownership on where you need to heal, bitch. This is how people feel like they, I can love you and I can fix them. I can fix you with my love. That shit is bullshit. That shit is dumb. Also very self-aggrandizing. Your love will not fix all their trauma. It can help soothe some things, but if they're not on the road to fix and unpack and deal with their trauma. You're wasting your time. You're putting yourself in danger too. You're leaving me like everybody else did. Well, maybe some of them were onto something, I don't know. All right, it's time for another group day where they bring all the couples back together. This is their first mixer since they've returned to their original couples and it's gonna be chaos because of course it will. Bear with me, there's a lot of emotional turmoil during this particular part because my emotions were also all over the place, but the show's emotions were all over the place. And I'm trying to pinpoint when a shift happened for me where I stopped thinking, oh, how cute, Yoli and Xander, and started thinking, ugh. And to be short with you, it was probably during this experience, this entire get together, okay? Vanessa, again, not a fan, but I feel like she didn't do anything wrong by doing this. She texts Mal 
to say that Yoli and Xander were communicating. And Mal is like, I feel like Vanessa told me that to be manipulative, which again, as much as I'm not a fan of Vanessa, I don't think that's the case. I think it was just letting you know where things are so that you're not confused, that you have all the information, like they are still in communication. Again, I'm no fan of Vanessa, but that didn't feel manipulative to me. It just felt like letting you know. Like I know something I'm letting you know. Very apparent that Mal is very much so on Yoli's side. Mal like trusts Yoli it seems and I'm like, but later things start to get complicated for lack of a better word because Yoli and Xander talk and it's very intimate and it's weird to do here where everyone could see you including your partners. Um, And it's just an incredibly interesting and strange thing to watch because admittedly there is a part of me that's like y'all are cute then there's the other part of me that's like yeah f vanessa but then there's the other part of me that's like but what about mal this is so disrespectful to mal mal does not deserve this i'm like wrestling with all those emotions as i'm seeing them talk to each other it's hard to sit there and look at them at this and they're like talking about how much they still deeply love each other and how they keep thinking about each other and how they want to try to be together. Because if you're having this conversation right now, I think what would have been the most ethical thing to do is for both of you to break up with your partners then. And I understand that's easier said than done because emotions are running high, those partners you've been with for years, but this connection has you shaken enough that you're considering leaving them. And at this point, you're just like, you're twisting the knife. And this isn't the only time. They have this interaction on and off throughout the night. And it's so intimate. At one point it was in front of Mildred and Mildred's dumbass co-signs it, but doesn't, you know, lend any like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do this here. <laughs> Mal doesn't deserve this, I don't know. And again, with Mal being the saint, is very chill about everything. Is this like a closure thing? You and Xander, is that what this is? And she's like, yeah. And Mal is like, is this a, I need to trust you thing? And she's like, yes, yes, do you trust me? Yes. And then Yoli just goes to flirt with Xander even more. Before they separated, Mal was like, I'm just letting you know that this shit isn't easy. I have to tell you that. She's like, yeah, I know, I know. And then goes to flirt with Xander. And it's like, I don't know, I just, I lost so much respect for Yoli during this particular event. Like even when they were falling in love during their experience, falling in love, whatever. I thought it was cute. I said that last time, but like the more it goes on, it's just being shady and deceptive. Again, to fuck Vanessa, but to Mal. What about Mal, man? <laughs> also, I don't see a whole lot of remorse. It's just Yoli being like, oh, I've wanted to be with you for so long. And it's like, then break up. But essentially what Yoli says to Xander is that I feel a different sense of loyalty to Mal because I've been with him for so long. But like if I, if me and Mal were further away from each other and we had broken up, like I would marry Xander. Not even start dating them because we're two people who seem to want the same thing. Marry. Wild. Okay, finally, again, the saint, Mal, is starting to get a bit more upset. And again, way better person than me. I would have been flipping tables and left a long time ago. <laughs> but Mal ends up saying something along the lines of, I know you guys weren't planning on falling in love. And if she does choose you, then that's that. She chooses you. I can't, you know, I'm not gonna try to fight that. I love her, period. I've been through shit with her. I've chose her at her best, at her worst. I choose her knowing that she loves you. That has changed nothing about how I feel about her. So do you choose Yoli the way I choose Yoli? Which is a question that both makes sense, but also I could see why Xander is like, I don't really want to answer that. This isn't the choosing day. And honestly, I'm choosing myself right now, which is an aversion that I get. But especially because Mal is like, I could be losing my relationship. Do you even care about her as much as I do? Like. I can see why that question was asked. And again, Mal isn't some crying, jealous mess. They aren't trying to fight people. They ain't flipping tables and shit. They are better than me. But eventually the cocktail party ends. And of course, each of the couples kind of recap the night. Lex and Ray argue about the same shit. Apparently Lexi's mad that Ray talked to Vanessa at all at that night. And I'm like, girl, you are obsessed to an unhealthy degree. It is taxing. Like either you believe that that is over, Ray doesn't feel anything about it, or you don't and you break up. 
Like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm tired. At this point, it's not even about their relationship anymore. It's like Lexi's obsession with Vanessa. Mal and Yoli talk about the night. And again, it's another one of those emotionally exhausting, supernaturally mature conversations. They go back and forth and Mal is like, is Xander your hell yes? And Yoli's like, well, I can't say that, but I can say that it doesn't seem as cloudy. Bitch, you've known them for less than two months. You dated them three weeks. How bad could y'all relationship have actually been? If you out here saying that I'm willing to give up my relationship for a stranger, I am losing my mind. But again, Mal the Saint, which I cannot give this scene justice. I, you just need to watch the show. And I think you kind of have to watch the rest of the show to really feel how frustrating this scene must be for Mal and how much of like an emotional whirlwind this entire experience has been specifically for Mal. If I'm not a hell yes, then let me go. But Yoli's like, but what if I don't wanna let you go? I'm not trying to give up on us. Are you trying to give up on us? And I'm just sitting there trying not to pull my hair out. Finally, after being pricked and prodded 8 million times in so many emotionally jarring and upsetting situations, finally, Mal snaps. I was like, you need to snap quicker, bitch. Cause I would have snapped a long time ago. She was like, what the f do you want? Like, do you want us to fight to the death for you? Do you want, like whoever survives it is the person that you gonna pick? You want us to go to the Coliseum for you? What the f do you want? Thank you, get angry, get mad. Stop being so fucking understanding. Stop loving people, patient and kind bullshit. Finally, Mal storms out. Cause good on you. Anyway, the episode ends with Xander and Vanessa going back home, talking things over, and they end up in a good place. Show us the contrast that Xander and Vanessa are, are fine and Mal and Yoli are kind of falling apart at the seams. Episode eight. So Sam and Ozzy, they're having a continual issue with the same problem again, which is that Sam wants to have a basic conversation about important issues and Ozzy shuts down and runs away. That's just the pattern of events. And finally, uh, Maybe Sam is starting to realize that that's not how she would like to be in a relationship. Um, they meet up with a friend of theirs and they end up getting into a fight. I don't even remember specifically what it was about, but Ozzy gets super defensive. Sam is like, yeah, this is the new Sam. The new Sam stands up for herself. She, she is allowing herself to talk. She considers her own needs in this relationship instead of always bending backwards for you. Whereas Ozzy, again, having come from a very tumultuous family, doesn't even listen to that and can't take in any criticism or critique without feeling like their entire being is wrong. Like it would seem even the slightest criticism sends them into this spiraling abyss. So instead of allowing any of that information inside, they defend feverishly. They can't even consider any of the, the issues that someone may have with the way that they do things. They have this seemingly a very strong aversion to being wrong. Being wrong makes you a bad person or an unworthy person. And they're like constantly fighting that. During like a sort of defense stage, Ozzy gets very nasty, very gross. Sam's emotions and what she's saying and the things that are very valid concerns, she they're calling that bullshit. Uh, luckily the friend is there who's a good person to be like a mediator, so to speak. And the friend is like, that is not cool. You don't call her emotions bullshit. And Ozzy is like, well, she's calling my emotions bullshit. And because the friend is there, she's like, she did not say that. That's how you're internalizing it because any criticism feels like a criticism on them as a person, like their entire self crumbles at that. As Ozzy does, they leave and have like a really hard to watch breakdown in the parking lot. It's one of those moments that uh, sure or whatever, I guess is something that could be considered an element of reality drama. But this felt too intimate. Like it's pretty apparent that Ozzy's having like a real time trauma flashback to childhood, back to when they were presumably, I don't know, but it sounds like they had a very abusive uh, upbringing. But Ozzy is unable to see how this inability to, or unwillingness to deal with their childhood trauma is resulting in them not being able to be a present and effective partner. And it's 
actively ruining a very good otherwise relationship. But with that said, good on Sam for like standing her ground and not running after Ozzy because that seems to be something that she's quite primed to do. Ozzy needs to learn to carry some of the emotional load because Sam is doing everything in that regard. Again, I feel like they should break up. I feel like everybody should break up. I don't know, maybe I'm just a bit of a relationship fatalist. <laughs> Not always, like there's people that can have problems and then there's like some like foundational issues. And I feel like each of these couples have some major foundational issues. I don't know, I don't get what Sam, for instance, gets out of a relationship with Ozzy. I mean, it's not for me to get, but I don't like what it like as a person who's taking on all that emotional burden, like what are you being reciprocated? This conversation bleeds into the night and by then they seem to have calmed down quite a bit and they're able to talk it over a bit. Not for long though. Um, <laughs> there's a moment where Ozzy cries in Sam's arms and there's like, I guess like a moment of feeling needed for Sam and, and Ozzy feels comforted by, by her. But uh, Sam asks the very reasonable question of like, so what are what are our plans going forth with how we're gonna fix our issues with communication? Very reasonable question. <laughs> and for some reason, this sends Ozzy on a whirlwind. The Ozzy becomes incredibly condescending. Why would you ask me that stupid question? That's a bullshit question. Ozzy starts calling her mate. And you can tell they're doing it in that way to be very like pissy, childish, honestly, like, I don't know, mate. He's like, why are you calling me mate all of a sudden? I don't know, mate. And it's just gross. And then Ozzy leaves again. <laughs> and it's just like, and I, girl. <laughs> but before Ozzy leaves out, Sam is like, I can tell you one thing for sure. I do not want a marriage like this. So do with that information what you will. They go crying on the street again falling into the abyss again. Again, another situation where it's just like, it feels almost too intimate, uh, where it's just like snot running, crying. Like Ozzy is like, I know she's trying her best, I know. And it's like trying her best, like try, she, what? <laughs> she's trying her best. She, all she did was ask if, you, if we can fix our communication and you blew up. Why don't you try your best? Anyway, Ozzy comes back and apologizes and they go to bed and they seem to have made up, whatever. Xander and Vanessa have a conversation with Vanessa's dad. He listens to how things have transpired thus far and how suddenly Vanessa wants to get married all of a sudden. Be careful that you're not just trying to do this in order to not lose Xander. And she's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, I hear you, but it's undeniable that a percentage of what you're feeling right now, how you suddenly wanna get married and have kids and settle down, there's a sizable amount of that that is a fear of losing Xander. And, and make sure that that's not the only reason why you're trying to do this. She was so adamant about not wanting to get married. So it was very strange to just suddenly be like a complete 180 all of a sudden. Yoli and Mal meet with Mal's friend and she asked the questions that I would ask like, what? You fell in love with a new person in three weeks? What does that even mean? <laughs> She's like, I love Mal and I love Xander and that doesn't make me love Mal any less, but it's hard because this new person wants what I want. Yoli brings up how if she didn't want children, it would be a much easier choice, but wanting children is, the concern that she has in regards to Mal. And Mal is like, I don't understand where this concern of me as a parent is coming from. I've had multiple people ask for me to be the godmother of their child because they know how great of a parent I would be. So where is all this concern about me as a parent coming from? And eventually we find out that that's not the actual problem. It's more so something in regards to finances. Eventually outright Yoli says, um, Xander has, is in a more financially stable place, um, has the correct insurance for like what they would like to do going forward, if they're gonna do IVF or whatever. Oh, this is the first I'm hearing of this. It all makes sense. Cause I didn't understand how you fell in love so quickly, but the money would make complete sense because they're more financially stable. And eventually because Yoli feels on the hot seat. She's like, she just walks out. Mal asks the friend like, if I propose, would you 
would I have your blessing? And the friend just doesn't answer <laughs> and they move on to the next scene. Uh, and before you know it, we're at the last night of being with their partners. Mildred and Tiff talk, uh, well, they nearly fall into another argument, <laughs> but it's not as heated as other things have been in conversation with them. But Mildred ends up saying something along the lines of like, I realized that I was never really in love with my ex. Tiff's like, that's a bit of a red flag for me because I, you know, I see marriages all around me and I could not fathom doing all of that just to, just to be married. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. Mildred strikes me as the type who's very anxiously attached and feels like marriage in some way will, will placate her, like make her feel secure only for her to get married and those same issues bleed over into the marriage because the issue was never whether or not you were married or whether or not the partner was committed. It was always internal. To want to get married while in such an unstable place in this relationship really denotes that you just want to get married, um, which is so concerning. <laughs> like you break up every other week and you're like, well, getting married would fix that. Wh what? But Mildred, she gets um, not as aggressive as she's been known to, but she does push back. She's like, no, that's not true. Don't you tell me what my past relationship was like and how and what that means in this current relationship. And I'm like, Xander and Vanessa have a conversation about Vanessa's sudden realization of her capacity to love and that she didn't know how much she loved Xander until she felt Xander slipping away. Looking back, she realized that she never gave Xander all the love that she had. I'm not a fan of Vanessa, but like, I'm sure to some degree that's true. And the episode ends with Mal and Yoli about to make the choice. Will they get married? Will they break up? Will Yoli choose Xander? Will Xander choose Yoli? Cause again, they ended on a good note, Z uh, Xander and Vanessa. Episode nine, Mal proposes to Yoli and Yoli accepts. I didn't know what I expected from this. I felt an immense pain. It's not this like happy, jubilant relief filled engagement, full of love and comfort. It's none of that. It feels heavy. And it's because as Mal <laughs> admits during the accepting of the proposal that she still loves Xander, imagine you get married and, and, and this is how that taints. The day you got engaged is you not being fully present and fully there and fully happy for both of them. For like Mal, I would, I, could not sit there and do what Mal is doing. I understand that's where you're at. I know where you were at when I proposed to you and we will get through this. The whole event doesn't even feel like it's about Yoli and Mal. It feels like Yoli is denying the reality that she's not 100% in the relationship anymore and just getting engaged because, well, this is what I wanted all this time and I've invested so much time in it. And I don't know, maybe Xander is gonna pick someone else and it's just like, Ew, I feel like getting engaged should be the most clear thing. I'm so happy thing, just pure elation. And it was booty, <laughs> like the entire engagement was booty. Again, Mal, infinitely respectful, is like, I've never disrespected your love with Xander and I'm not gonna start doing it now. I know how you felt when I proposed and we are going to work this out. But it felt like Yoli was disappointed to be engaged to Mal, like she was getting engaged out of obligation and not like desire. This is why in an effort to not be the bad guy, because sure, it doesn't look great going with a person that you met three weeks ago instead of the person that you were dating for four years or whatever. But in an effort to not be the bad guy, you are the worst guy. Yoli looks like a dick. And that's because you're being a dick. Mildred and Tiff. Y'all wanna guess what happens? This one did not surprise me. <laughs> they got engaged. This does not surprise me. Toxic motherfuckers get engaged all the time. They just don't know when to quit. <laughs> and I highly doubt it will last. Though again, Tiff seems to have learned quite a bit from the experience and the experiment. Mildred is still Mildred and uh, but good luck. I guess. Ozzy and Sam. We'll say these pairings really had me stumped. I didn't know who was gonna be together and who wasn't for the most part. I was just like, I don't know. I was praying that in the course of Sam kind of understanding her worth a bit more. And I was just praying that Sam wouldn't sign herself up for the rest of her life being this emotional mule. Ozzy 
starts by telling a story about how turtles or some shit give a rock to their soulmate and then they give her a literal rock. <laughs> it was so awkward and it seemed to last an eternity, but it was just a red herring because they gave an actual ring, so. And despite me screaming at the TV, Sam, bitch, don't, even though this was like two years ago, bitch, don't. She says, yes. I will say Ozzy seems really excited about it though, which seems to be a step in the right direction or overcompensation. Either way, good luck. Uh, okay, it's Vanessa and Xander. Come on, Vanessa and Xander break up. Come on, Vanessa and Xander break up. And Xander does, we're one, we got one. What is that? Like one for three? <laughs> we're one for three, but we did it, baby. And they cry. I guess it was sad if I would have felt more passionate towards Vanessa, but I found her very annoying. Ending relationships isn't easy for anyone, but I am happy that they aren't together. Kind of brings me to kind of a complicated place when we have uh, Xander and Yoli meet after that. Because in theory, both of these people are in the same place in a way. They had a partner. They fell in love, quote unquote. I hesitate to say people can fall in love in three weeks. I don't think you have the materials to fall in love in three weeks, but this is coming from a Capricorn who's never been in love. So, so uh, take my criticism with the biggest grain of salt, but I found myself feeling particular vitriol towards Yoli. And I wanted to kind of unpack that. Again, technically they were both in a relationship with other people and they fell in love. And after coming back to their orig original partners, there is an element of them either feeling or feigning uh, intimacy and closeness with their partner in a way that perhaps is a bit misleading. Well, not really, because they both told their partners, like I, I have feelings for this other person. But I think the thing that made me feel so gross about this particular instance and particularly strongly against Yoli is because one, Yoli accepted the proposal, yeah? She's engaged. So anything she does post this, there's nothing but clarity, babe. Y'all will not be together. You have no plans to be together. Anything you do inappropriate at this point is de facto cheating. It's not this weird gray area where you're doing the experiment. You've already decided. Two, Xander had left Vanessa at this point. Whether it was to be with Yoli or just to be by themselves, they had made the decision to end their old relationship and start anew. And three, I'm not gonna lie, it's because I don't like Vanessa and I like Mal. This is gross. This is really gross because Yoli comes in, she takes the ring off and they hug for such a long time, so long that I thought, is Yoli just gonna go back to Mal and then say, I can't do this, like take the ring back, I, I'm in love. But no, she just, she just got engaged and they're hugging and they're crying. She's just acting like the engagement that she just agreed to is just a placeholder until she finds out whether or not she can be with Xander. That's how it felt. If not just to be with Xander until her guilt about just being with Mal because I feel a sense of loyalty towards Mal is out of the way. She takes a long ass time to tell Xander that she has accepted Mal's proposal. Pouring their heart out saying how much they love Yoli, how much they want to have a beautiful life together and how great that life will be. And she's like smiling and she's so excited. And she's like, oh, by the way, I accepted Mal's proposal. You've been with Mal for four years, three, four years. And that three week relationship you had is going head to head. It's fighting that hard. You're having this hard of a time leaving this relationship. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying, if you feel this powerfully about it, just go. Cause you're not fully committed to the original relationship and you look damn committed to this one. So just go. It's, it's ugly, it's nasty behavior. They'll break away and, th and then she'll be like, Sander, and then they come back and hug again. It's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I love you, dude, break away, oh my God. And even in the post interview, she's like, I don't love Mal the same way that I love Xander. And I'm just like, Mal don't deserve this. I'm emotionally drained, but um, who's left? Oh, Ray and Lexi, they get engaged. For the most part, everyone got engaged except for Xander and Vanessa. So that's a yay, but everything else concerning. <laughs> but um, but rest assured, we have to follow up on episode 10, the reunion. It has been a year since the end of filming. Apparently, shocker, 
a few couples are not together anymore. No one's gotten married, but there are people that are still engaged and still preparing and stuff like that. So Lexi and Ray are still together and they seem to be having a good time this last year. They said they've had a great time in their relationship, traveling. They've had the best year of their relationship so far. Of course, given that this is the reunion, we have to talk about the issue, the situation with Vanessa. Uh, something that they refer to as, quote, finger gate. That's, wow, that is incredibly jarring and uncomfortable. Oh my God. You know, they recap it the way that they always do. And, uh, but they seem to have been able to look past that finally and are in a good place now. So great. It would seem that Xander and Vanessa have not communicated since the show. And Xander seems to have realized that they were a bit too focused on marriage itself and not really spending the time to focus on oneself. Vanessa is still visibly in love with Xander. She tries to say it's just in like a friend way, but I don't know how realistic that is, but I would like to have a friendship with you. Like you're my buddy, you know, that whole thing. So we'll see how that goes. They moved to Mal and Yoli, who are apparently not together, quote, happily in the words of Mal. <laughs> Mal says that watching the show was incredibly uh, triggering because it put into perspective that Yoli wasn't as upfront about things as they thought. Apparently while Yoli was with Xander, Yoli would message Mal and say, don't worry about Xander. You know what you're choosing, stuff like that. Unprovoked apparently, like Mal wasn't asking for that reassurance, but Yoli went out of her way to say, don't worry about me and Xander. My estimation is that A, it was a guilty conscience and B, it was to make sure that Mal didn't, you know, fall in love with their partner as well. It felt calculated in some way or another. And Mal is like, you feel like a dangerous stranger to me. Like more so than losing like my partner, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my friend. And that's the part that's been harder for me. Like I've had your back, your, the whole time and you made a fool out of me. I was under the impression that you were doing again, like closure talks and stuff like that. And y'all were holding hands and I ain't gonna lie, that shit was cute. Mal says that, she was like, that shit was cute. And you deserve to be loved. Like, I'm happy that you found a love with Xander, but you weren't as upfront with me as as you are trying to pretend that you were, cause you weren't. But I think you guys deserve to try. Here comes Vanessa, what I did try. <laughs> Which is news to Mal, apparently. Xander and Yoli had gone to Coachella together. It was a few months later and they quote unquote, just hung out. They didn't do anything. They just met up. They didn't date, which I don't believe at all. At one point you was trying to throw away your four year relationship for somebody you knew for three weeks, considering ending your long-term relationship for this love. Y'all didn't even try. Y'all just went to Coachella together. And apparently there's something about them maybe planning a trip to Hawaii together or something that Vanessa saw. I don't know. All that to say, no, they're not together. And Xander is just focusing on themselves right now. Mildred and Tiff are not together. Thank God. The same shit all over again, but this time much worse because Mildred does what Mildred does. She talks so much and it's overpowering and it's overwhelming. One thing that was very frustrating to me and got my like blood pressure, like I was heated, is that at no point was there any mitigation to say, hey, okay, so you've said what you need to say. Let's hear Tiff side of things. It was just bombarding, going, going. And it's mostly just Tiff trying to defend themselves like, what, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. Mildred, of all people, Mildred offers up this information where she admits to DV. She, th she says she threw things at Tiff and some of it was heavy and Tiff called the police on her and Mildred is acting as if Tiff did something wrong in doing that. What? And it was so frustrating to have no one say, whoa, 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 what? You're not the victim here. You're not, you're not the battered party here. You're abusive. If someone said it, it was edited out. The host didn't say shit, cast didn't say shit. Everybody was just like listening, maybe in disbelief, I don't know, but no one said shit. They just let her rant. Tiff is having to defend herself and it was very triggering to 
and watch. And eventually Tiff just walks off because what the f else are you supposed to do? Event Once Tiff walks off, Sam does say something in regards to that in that Sam way, which is still not enough. I need you to cuss bitches out, but I get why that's not your personality. But she's like, you're making it sound like it was all one-sided, like Tiff did everything wrong and that's not okay. Ozzy ends up saying like, this type of interaction is why I didn't feel safe with you, which I do believe. Granted, Ozzy runs away in all situations, but in this context, it makes sense because Mildred is abusive. Mildred is awful. And then blames being abusive on being Latina. Anyway, Sam is very kind to go after Tiff and like comfort them, which was very, very cool of them. Tiff was kind of hyperventilating and feeling like bombarded because that's what Mildred does. Why is she allowed here? Like, why is she allowed to have this platform to spew this bullshit? It wasn't live. They could have just ushered her ass out of here with that. I don't know, y'all ain't got no security, nothing. And then they just have pleasantries with Mildred as if she didn't just admit to DV. They're like, oh, where are you at on your healing journey? Are you dating? And then Yoli's like, oh, do you need something? Do you need water? Are you okay? F all y'all, seriously. Anyway, last but not least, Ozzy and Sam are still together for some reason. They seem to be still doing planning for the wedding. They plan on having one of the weddings in Australia. I, I hope they're doing everything they need to to protect both of them emotionally or however, given the family's, I don't know what the family's issues are, but there's def other than homophobia. But yeah, that's basically the reunion. Well, except for a swift title card that tells us that Lexi and Ray broke up shortly after filming the reunion. <laughs> and that's the ultimate of queer love. <laughs> but I'm not complaining because again, I don't think that any of these people should be together. So to hear that they broke up is actually a good sign. Um, and maybe Sam and Ozzy being together means that they've reached some type of understanding that they're actually more healed now. I don't know. That's all for today, folks. If you watch The Ultimatum Queer Love, I wanna know your opinions. I wanna know, have your opinions changed since part one? If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. Again, feel free to check out our sponsor thread up. That'll be down below. If you have any suggestions for terrible gay movies that I should watch during this month, feel free to put those down in the comment section. Again, for some reason, all of the awful movies that I wanted to watch come out in August. And I will see you guys next time.